see or hear the term climate resilience, and I guess we need to think about whether this is actually different from adaptation. So is it different, is it the same, or is it an overlapping concept? Resilience is generally described as, refers to, if you like, the characteristics of a system. So the, its ability to absorb and recover from stresses and shocks, and perhaps also its ability to reorganize as those stresses change or as new stresses emerge. So in terms of when one talks about climate resilience, then we're applying that resilience framing to climate risks and impacts. So climate resilience or, or a system that, is, that has climate resilience is able to absorb and the shocks that it's exposed to, the climate shocks, and also recover from those shocks that it can't absorb and also progressively uh, respond to new risks that emerge. So if you think back to the definition of adaptation, we talked about adaptation as being a process. And in a way, resilience is the state of a system, a, char a characteristic of the system. So one is really a process. And we can think of adaptation as a process that might contribute to the resilience of a system, to, to these characteristics. So if one is well adapted, then one can absorb the climate shocks relatively easily and one has systems in place that allow us to recover from the impacts that can't be avoided. And if one has adaptive capacity, one then has the ability to reorganize and, uh, and, and, and build the resilience to, to climate risks that, that emerge. So re climate resilience and climate adaptation are sort of overlapping linked concepts, I think, in the context of climate change the adaptation is largely a process that increases resilience to climate risks. They're different but related uh, concepts. I want to finish off by talking about this final concept, which is maladaptation. And that's defined by people working in the climate adaptation space as actions that increase the risk of adverse climate outcomes. Now, one of type of action could be a specific climate adaptation response that has unintended negative consequences in other areas or in the future when climate risks emerge. So for example, a country might start investing in commercial irrigated agriculture to increase food security under the risks of climate change. But a negative side effect of that is that there's less water available for small farmers further downstream from the irrigation system. So there's a negative side effect that increases the climate vulnerability of those other farmers. So it's sort of a case of unintended consequences of a particular climate-related response. But maladaptation can also talk to other development actions that aren't climate-driven at all, but increase climate change risk and vulnerability. So for instance, in an urban setting, the need for urban development might lead to a city or a, a, a town deciding to open up a new suburb in a certain area and have urban development in that area. If that happens to be in an area that's prone to flood risk, you're creating a maladaptive situation by choosing to develop in an area that is going to become prone to climate change risks. So just to summarize what we've covered in this lecture, we've looked at a whole range of concepts related to adaptation, which hopefully gives us a bit of a common language and understanding for the rest of the course. There are many more concepts that, uh, that have specific definitions, and one of the tasks we want you to do in, in this week's course is to look at the Intergovernmental P Panel's Climate Change Glossary on, on climate-related terms and read up on a whole lot of other concepts that, that you need to be familiar with. And that should then provide us with the grounding for the rest of this week and the rest of the course.